Welcome to this Arnold Culliford Knitwear tutorial on grafting in garter stitch. This tutorial is part of our Year of Techniques, 12 projects to help you to upgrade your knitting skills. Garter stitch grafting allows you to seamlessly join two sets of live stitches in garter stitch. You may already have tried grafting in stocking stitch, maybe when you were closing the toe of a sock, um, and garter stitch grafting is very similar. It uses the same sort of process, but creates a seamless garter stitch join. I've finished knitting my cowl, and I have at the beginning used Judy's Magic Cast On, and so my stitches are all live on my um, circular needle cable. I can pop some tips back on the end of there ready to join them to the live stitches at the other end of the cowl. Once the two sets of stitches are joined it'll be almost impossible to tell where the graft line is unless of course the colours in the cowl give it away. And here's a finished cowl, and you can tell by the colours that the join was there, but you can't see it in the knitting at all. The graft line completely replicates the knitted stitches. In order to walk you through how to work your garter stitch graft, I'm going to use some small stitch swatches to demonstrate. If you've used a crochet provisional cast on at the start of your cowl, then it will look something like this with the crochet chain at the end where you will start to unzip the crochet. Do watch our provisional crochet cast on video for a reminder on how to return your stitches onto your needles. Once you've removed your crochet chain, or if you've used Judy's Magic Cast On to begin with, then you will be set up like this. We've got the right side of the fabric on the outside. We've got the cast on edge on the front needle and we've got our live stitches that we were just working on on the back needle. This sets us up for a ridge high garter stitch graft. It's called ridge high because on the front needle the garter stitch ridge or pearl bumps are right up close to the needle. On the rear needle it's ridge low because the pearl bumps are um, away from the needle. They look very close there, but if you compare it with the wrong side, you can see that the wrong side was ridge high because the pearl bumps are right close to the needle. So the right side on the front needle is ridge high and on the back needle is ridge low. We then thread our yarn tail onto a tapestry needle and this is the working yarn from the back needle. And we're going to do two operations to set up the beginning of the graft. And we will then repeat four steps right the way across the row to join the stitches seamlessly. So we shuffle the stitches to the end of the needles. The needle size you use doesn't matter at all because the tension of this row is going to be determined by how you sew it. So to start off, I'm going to go through the first stitch on the front needle purlwise. I'm going to pull it through and leave the stitch on the needle. I'm then going to do the same on the rear needle. I'm going to pass the tapestry needle through the stitch purlwise and pull it through leaving the stitch on the needle. Okay that was our setup purlwise through the front needle, purlwise through the back needle. We're now going to work our four step process and we're going to do it a few times so that you get a good view of it. We go through the first stitch on the front needle knitwise and slip it off. Oop. 
and then through what was the second stitch purl wise but leave it on and we now do the same on the back needle we go through the first stitch knitwise and slip it off and the second stitch purl wise and leave it on you'll notice that it looks a bit of a mess I'm not going to tighten my stitches until the very end because that way you can ensure you get really even tension as you go across so now we're back onto the front needle and we repeat those four stitches again I'm just moving the graft out of the way so the first stitch is knitwise knitwise off and then purlwise on and pull through and then on the back needle knitwise off purlwise on and then the last one you just go knitwise off and knitwise off at the back as well and pull through and now you have what looks like the world's messiest graft line but this is the magical part where you tighten it up so take one of the loops back near the beginning and just start to give it a little tug and then move that tug along and you're going to work along tightening up the stitches so that they match the tension of the fabric around them and if you go gently and don't tighten too much on your first run but you tighten off a bit so you can see these are beginning to look more like the surrounding fabric you can always repeat the process but it's much easier to under tighten and tighten them up than it is to loosen it if you've tightened it too much in the first place so I'm literally just working across the row moving the slack along so that we're reaching a point where it's more more even and the more you fiddle the closer you can get to a point where you can't see which row was grafted Right, and then we can go back and pay a little bit more attention to the beginning of the row look out which end it is that needs a little tug there and tighten it along a little bit further there you go we've now joined and created a whole new row of stitches by grafting them together you now know how to join two sets of live stitches with a garter stitch graft. Don't forget to go back and re-watch our two videos on provisional cast-ons, Judy's Magic Cast-On and the Crochet Provisional Cast-On, as you'll need to remember how to unzip that cast-on edge ready to do your grafting. I do hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you'd like to know more about A Year of Techniques, do visit our website acknitwear.co.uk and why not try something new today?